scripture again and it says rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice let your moderation be known unto all men the Lord is at hand be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, that's a message in itself right there, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. The greatest battle we have today, last week we preached a little bit about faith, and I'm going to preach to you today about something that is that destroys your faith, and that is your mind. Now, how does your mind destroy your faith? Let's go back in time and let's look at Cain. Cain was the first man to have problems with his mind. And what do I mean by problems with his mind? Is he was tortured, I believe, by the things that the enemy was planning in his mind. That's how he made the wrong sacrifice. How did Abel know? Abel spent time with God. He knew to give the sacrificial lamb. Cain had spent time with himself and brought the fruits of the ground. What I'm trying to explain to you today is, is the battleground is in your mind. Everything that is happening in this world, all these battles, is because of your mind. And I'm going to explain this to you, is that what happens is, is television, newspapers, magazines, and everything is anti-Christian. It's anti-relationship with Jesus Christ. And what happens is you're, the enemy comes to you. I hope I'm preaching at the right church this morning because the enemy comes to you. And, then you know, I hope that if you go to most churches, they're not going to accept this. But I'm telling you there's a very real devil that the church has put out as if he does not exist. And your mind is a battleground for the enemy that comes to you and tells you things like you're worthless. God doesn't love you. God doesn't want you. Your kids are going to die. This is going to have all these bad things and it consumes your mind. It brings us into a state of depression. And the next thing you know, our faith is destroyed. You cannot have faith if you don't think on good things. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? If you think on what God can do, think of the things that God has done for you before. He's done for you in the past. He got you out of this. Some of you are in prison right now for God. You might as well face reality. When you was a kid, you should have went to jail. God delivered you. When you did this, God delivered you. When you got sick, God delivered you. When you was in an accident, you should have died, God delivered you. This is what God does. And in our mind, we need to put away the enemy that's in our mind and say, no, Jesus Christ is true and the devil is a liar. Sometimes you've got to stand up and rebuke the enemy of your mind. Now, how does he torture our minds? is he comes to us and tells us all kinds of things that's contrary to the word of God. Is that not what he did with Eve? He first appears to him, and as last night I was explaining this <laughs> to my mother and father-in-law's house, how this works. I said he slithers in like a serpent, and he says, does God really love you? Does God really care for you? If God really cared for you, this wouldn't have happened. This other thing wouldn't have happened. This other thing wouldn't have happened. This wouldn't have happened. You wouldn't have got divorced. You wouldn't have lost your job. You wouldn't have lost your car. You wouldn't have lost your house. All these things, that's the enemy. Sometimes you've got to stand up and rebuke the enemy out of your mind and say, get thee behind me, Satan. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am a child of the living God. He loves me. If it's bad, are you getting more coming with this? You need to have in your mind, you're saying, Wayne, well, it's not possible. I know most churches tell you you cannot control your mind. Yes, you can. You can train your mind. Listen to what Paul is telling you here. Paul says, finally, brethren, after all these chapters in the Bible, but he comes to the Philippian church, this letter, he comes to four, and what's he telling? Finally, brethren, some of the troubles you're having, basically, is because you need to think on these things. Do not think on things that look bad. Listen, <laughs> if you think about having cancer, it's going to make you sicker than just the cancer. Are you with me? God's bigger than your cancer. God's bigger than you losing your house. God's bigger than you losing your job. God's bigger than these things. As I said last week, you worried 20 years over things as it profited you in. That's my question. 
You've worried yourself half to death. Half of us are sick because of worry. Has it benefited you any? That's what I'm asking. That's what God asked me. See, remember last week I told you I was preaching to myself. This is the other message that God has, because I, this is what works in my mind. See, you may not be getting a thing out of this because your mind don't do this to you. I constantly have to battle. Let me tell you, Monday when God gave me this message, the water guy shows up. So you're going to be trying on this very message. And I was like, this is awesome, God. I can control these thoughts. And when these thoughts come in, rebuke the enemy and say, no, that's not of God. I don't accept that. Stop listening to the devil. That's what I'm trying to tell you this morning. Stop listening to him. Get him out of your life. Get him out of your mind. Get him out of your house. We got a lot of people afraid just like they were scared yesterday about, they said, oh, the light flips on and we've seen stuff move in the house. And I know a lot of church people experience this. Throw the devil out of your house. He has no power in your house. Don't be afraid of him. He is nothing. I wish he would show up here so I could beat him half to death. I've tired of what he's done to the children of God. You have power over this enemy. And the enemy is attacking your mind. It's destroying your faith. And that's why we don't pray right anymore. That's why we don't pray. Well, it's useless for you to pray. I wouldn't because God ain't going to hear you. That's a lie. That's a lie to hell. God hears every prayer. She prays every one of you that you pray. He is hearing your prayers. Just let, stop listening to this enemy. He says so many things to me, I don't even know what to do. It's like a rah, 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 every morning. You know what? This week, though, it's been different. Do you know why? Because I get up, wait a minute, that's not of God. Wait a minute, that's not of God. That, hey, that's not of God. This is God. And you start thinking of good things. Think about what God has done for you. We need to be a joyful church. Is that not correct? Is this not? We are different. <laughs> Most church people, and this has been said for since I've been in church 50 years, my whole life, and it's been said this, there's nothing worse than a Christian. It looks like a prune. Nobody wants to go hang around with somebody suppressed all the time. Yes, we've been tried. Yes, we've been tested. Have you made it? Did you make it through what you went through? Yes, you made it through. When we get older, church, we need to stop thinking like little children. Is that not right? That's why Jesus says you need to love me, love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and what's last? Your mind. You have to love him with your mind. And how do you do that? Let God be true and every man a liar. The devil's a liar. Your neighbor's a liar. Anybody who doesn't know God is a liar. God is the truth teller. Jesus is the truth teller. And we need to stand on what he said. I'm not going to listen to this enemy. I'm not going to get depressed anymore. I'm not going to be cast down anymore. You're not going to run me in the ground anymore. See, because he can't win your soul. He wants to torment you the whole time you're here on the earth. That's his goal. Does he not do that? Am I preaching to myself? Does anybody else go through this? Look, nobody over here is going to raise their hand. Right, I don't have any problems, preacher. <laughs> yes. We always battle with our mind. And this is what the enemy does. You know, I know the church don't believe this anymore, but I'll tell you in the 30s, remember the cartoon, and I've said this before, Bugs Bunny, you got the devil on one side, and you got the angel of the Lord on the other side. And guess who? If you listen to this devil, you're going to be depressed. I didn't say you're going to be not saved. I'm not saying this. What I'm saying is, is our joy of our salvation is disappeared out of the church because we're believing stuff they're saying on TV. The Muslims are going to take over the world. My God's bigger than Muslims. My God's bigger than Nebuchadnezzar. My God is bigger than the fiery furnace. My God is bigger than all the gods of this earth. My God is bigger than the television, the magazines, the newspapers. My God is bigger than some crazy maniac that's trying to kill everybody. We have been obsessed since 2001 with what's going to happen. I'm afraid all the time. Everybody's afraid. There's no reason to be afraid. Church, God is on your side. He has chose you. He has plucked you out of the apples. You are the apple of his high. He loves you. He cares for you. And he wants you to stop listening to this enemy. It's destroying your relationship and power with God. Doesn't mean he doesn't love you, but you can't have power with God if you don't love him with all your heart. Uh, we've already preached on this. All your soul with all your strength and all your mind. Your mind. This is what God wants us to know this morning. Is stop listening to this enemy puking false stuff into your brain. <laughs> it can be done. This used to be the biggest thing with, the, um, with George Fox and all other preachers. 
because he believed that your, you had power over the enemy. Your brother, you have no power, they would tell him, over sin. You have no power to, it because man just automatically does this. Yeah, no, no, no. Fox realized that we have power with God and we don't have to listen to this enemy. You know, I know that we're Christians or timid people. Okay? And you know, I know we have to love our brother as ourselves. Sometimes, though, you have to smack the devil right across the face. You know, you ever had a kid that won't shut up and they keep running their mouth? Sorry, I'm 50, I got some older kids. And they keep running, 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 running. Next thing you know, it, it just automatic. Bash! And you smack them. Or you yell at them or you flip out. It, you get what I'm saying? The devil is our enemy. Why sit and listen to him? You don't allow some crazy person to come to your house and kill your whole family. Sit there and talk to you. Throw him out. No, that's a lie. No, that's not true. That's not true. He told you stuff 10 years ago that has never came to pass yet. <laughs> Why? Because he has no power. All he has is a threat. All he does is run his mouth. All he does is talk. He, as a matter of fact, how I got this message is I was watching a, <laughs> about a quote. I don't know how accurate it was, but it was about in Africa where this preacher had, was taking Christians Supposedly a true story. I'm just telling you the way it went. But they, the, the pastor was a devil worshiper. So they had placed this as a Christian movie, put this pastor from this cult in power, and what he was doing was taking the people in the church to their death. So in other words, he would take them on these journeys, and these natives who were in the witchcraft in Africa Anyway, while I was watching this, I said, God, why do these Africans believe all this voodoo stuff? I go, why is it they give so much credence to it? And the Lord said, because they believe it. Faith gives you power. So that enemy that's speaking to your mind has power if you give it to him. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. If you believe what he is saying, you give him power. If you carry on with this for years, listen to that enemy, it will finally manifest itself. Get it out of there. If the doctor tells you, do you not know, let me tell you this, this is God's honest truth. In 1997, Dr. Ginn down here told me that in 10 years you will be in a wheelchair. Whatever you need to do, you better do it now because you've got severe rheumatoid arthritis. And because of my stomach, I ate my lining out of my stomach from all the pain medicine. He said, in 10 years, you've been in a wheelchair, and there's nothing really that can be done about it. I, for six months, believed that. That is a God's honest truth. Six months, believed that. I said I cried. I said, God, take my life. Uh, God, I even bought a bunch of life insurance and, and was ready to die. It'll all be paid off. She'll be, the family be taken care of. Is exactly what I said. You know what hit me one day? And the Lord kind of shut up and says, How long are you going to believe that evil report? I was like, Wow, I never thought of that. Why am I believing this? So, next thing you know, people started to come in, Man, what are you going to do? I said, Let me tell you something right now. God will decide if I'm in a wheelchair or not, not some doctor, not some disease. Nobody will decide that but Jesus Christ himself. I'm 50 years old. It's 20 years ago. I'm still not in a wheelchair. Amen. I don't care what the enemy says. I don't care. what He is He is nothing, church. He is nothing to you. As a born-again believer and in love with Jesus Christ, there is nothing has any power over you. This enemy threatening you, I'm going to take your kid. I'm going to do this. They're going to die. They're going to be sick. This is horrible. That's why church people, we ever notice I've got a spot on me. Oh, I know it's awful. That's the enemy telling you that. You don't know if it's awful or not. Run from this. Run from this. Stop listening to him. You don't have to listen to him. You have power over it. If you did not love God, he wouldn't even worry about you at all. That's why you're saying, I know this guy. And he lives like hell. And he's blessed financially. He's blessed with his cars. He's blessed at work. Don't give this guy a raise. Don't even do nothing. He's a crook. He's a criminal. All this stuff's running through your mind. That's the devil trying to tell you, get rid of God. And these things go away. See? see, I'm really your buddy. No, he's not your buddy. He is your worst nightmare 
Throw him out of your house. Get him out of your house. And here's what I tell people. Stop being afraid of ghosts. It's not being, people go, how do you watch a scare? I don't watch my, my, anybody that knows me knows I do not have television. Uh, but I do watch the internet. Okay, I do like, because I like to watch research stuff. Sorry, I'm a nerd. Uh, but I, I'm not saying I'm watching anything. I just like watch research stuff. The bottom line is a lot of the stuff that we ingest in our mind is separates from God. If you ever notice the horror movies, watch the horror movies. That, who wins? Who always wins in a horror movie? You watch the exorcist and they throw the preacher out the window. He dies. Why did that Satan try and tell you? I'm in control. See, God's in control. I'm in control. Let me tell you, if a real man of God stood there, the devil wouldn't have did jack, but fell on his hands and knees like he did before Christ and said, don't cast me into the abyss. Let me go into the swine. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is the power that you actually have, that I actually have. All of us as believers have. Not for the preacher. Everybody's always looking at the preacher. No, you have the power. I have people, preacher, you need to come down here and pray. Something bad's happening. Why am I need to run down there? That's a two-hour drive. 